find the difference quotient. Okay, so the difference quotient here is this complicated looking fraction. We're going to evaluate the difference quotient by basically finding the different components of it and then put it together and simplify. So for example, I'm going to find f of x plus h first. And that means I'll basically plug in this piece here into the function. So just rewrite the function leaving a space wherever you have an x. And then what you're going to fill in the space is just x plus h. All right, once you have that done, you've got the f of x plus h part filled in. Then, of course, f of x is already done for you, right? This piece is just that piece, right? And then there's nothing to do with the h part. So what we're going to do now is put it all together into this complicated fraction. So let's plug in this piece here for f of x plus h. So it'll be x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 1 minus, right? And where is this minus coming from? It's coming from right here in the formula, right? So the minus is basically part of that difference quotient. Then we'll plug in the f of x. We put a parenthesis where we're going to put the f of x in. So it'll be x squared minus 3x plus 1, right? And then all of that is over h. So remember, in this part here is just your f of x plus h, and this part here is just your f of x. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and simplify. So simplifying means we need to square this piece here. So that first term will get squared. So it'll be x squared plus x times h times 2, if we're using the shortcut formula, right? So 2hx plus h squared. That's how you square something using the shortcut procedure, right? Then minus 3 times x is negative 3x. And minus 3 times h is minus 3h. And you have the plus 1 at the end. Then you're going to distribute in a negative here, so make it minus x squared. And then the minus times this is positive 3x. And then finally, minus times 1 is negative 1. All right, and all of that will be over h. Now from there, we're just going to combine like terms. So anything that's alike can be combined. And we'll often find things that can cancel out. So for example, this negative 3x and the positive 3x will cancel out. This negative x squared will cancel out with the positive x squared over there. And then from there, we have negative 1 canceling out with positive 1. So when you look at the fraction and look at what's left over, we're going to see there's a few things with h's in them, right? So we'll have 2hx plus h squared minus 3h all over h. All right, from there, we can factor out the h that's common to the terms in the top. So we'll pull out an h, leaving just 2x plus h minus 3. And all of that is over h. So basically, we can cancel out those h's. And our final answer then for the difference quotient is just 2x plus h minus 3. All right, very good. Let's take a look at part b then. So for part b, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to first evaluate or determine what f of x plus h would be. And to do that, we're basically going to just leave a space where the x used to be in the function and substitute in x plus h. Now once we have that, we're going to then fill in the difference quotient itself. So we're going to use a fraction, right? A minus, right? On the top of the fraction, then a parenthesis to hold the original function, and an h in the denominator. Now in the first position, we'll put that f of x plus h we found. So we'll have the square root of x plus h plus 2 minus f of x, which is just the square root of x plus 2. And all of that's over h. Then from there, we will go ahead and rewrite this as the square root of x plus h plus 2 minus, right? There's nothing really here to do except for just say minus x plus 2 over h. All right, let's first give ourselves some room before we go ahead and try to simplify this any further. So what I'm going to do is just kind of clear out what we did before. Okay, so looking at the fraction that results here, you might say, gee, I don't know what I can do to simplify it. But there is actually a kind of hint there in the fact that the numerator has these two radicals in it. Just like in the denominator of a fraction, when we see radicals in the numerator, we want to think about rationalizing the numerator. So because the numerator has these radicals, it might be helpful to rationalize it. Now, it may not be helpful, but 
we'll know once we try whether it's useful or not. So let's go ahead and perform the rationalization of the numerator. What I mean by that is basically I'm going to multiply the top of the fraction by the same thing that's there already, but I'm going to change the sign that's in the middle of it. So I'm going to put a plus sign in the middle. So instead of having the square root of x plus h plus 2 minus the square root of x plus 2, I'm going to multiply that numerator by the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus the square root of x plus 2. All right, and I have to do that to the top and bottom of the fraction, or else I'd be changing the value of the fraction, right? Remember, you can always multiply a fraction by a fancy form of 1, which is all this is, but you can't just multiply it in the numerator by something. That would change the value of the fraction. All right, so if I do that, then what's going to happen? Well, luckily for us, when you multiply something like this that looks so complicated, it actually becomes a difference of squares, and the pattern will essentially be a minus sign between them but when you multiply this term times this term, you're going to lose the radical and you're going to end up with x plus h plus 2. And when you multiply this term times this term, you're going to end up again without the radical, just x plus 2. Now, of course, we'll have parentheses around that because we'll need to distribute in the negative sign. And then from there, we're going to have in the denominator simply h times this complicated denominator. Now, You don't want to go ahead and try to multiply in the h. At this point, we're not going to do that. Later on, if we feel that it's necessary, we could always distribute. But for now, I think it's best to leave it alone. The reason why is you're going to see that when we go ahead and clean up the top a little bit, we're going to have some things cancel out. So we'll end up having here x plus h plus 2. Distributing the negative in, we're going to get minus x and then minus 2, right? All over that crazy looking denominator, right? And what's going to happen here is we're going to have the 2's cancel out with the 2's, right? The X's cancel out with the X's, and you just have an H on top. Now from there, you can actually divide off the H, right? So even though you'd have this expression initially, you would then be able to cancel out the H's just leaving a 1 up top. So the final answer to your expression would be 1 over the square root of x plus h plus 2 plus x plus 2. Okay, so basically that is it. Now, of course, you may be concerned with the fact that you have these square roots in the denominator, but it's actually going to be okay here. The reason why you're learning the difference quotient is it's actually an algebra skill that's necessary for something in calculus. And what we just did is actually going to make our lives very easy if we were performing the next step, which would be done in calculus. So at this point, this is kind of like an intermediary step to something that you'll do later on in calculus. So even though we normally wouldn't want to leave the answer with those radicals in the denominator like that, in calculus we'll see that um, you'd be able to carry this problem out a little further, and then eventually later on you could rationalize it if you felt the need to.